this platoon leader training course I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm happy that you guys showed up. Uh, kind of expected uh, more people, but it doesn't really matter because when I made this, I decided that we were going to do it even if only two guys showed up because uh, I figured even two competent platoon leaders in UO would be a great improvement. So, um, so today we're going to talk, be talking about marching orders and um, it's a it's a problem we've been facing before with the with people uh, with commanders not really knowing what to put in a marching order. They just say, "Okay, go over there and uh, do this and that." So I wanted to put in some uh, more tools for you guys, uh, some uh, things to remember whenever you make a marching order, and especially when you do convoy missions. Okay, so um, of course you all know uh, know the rules. So. Of course, we won't be able to cover everything. We'll cover the aspect of marching orders and uh, remember to, uh, to take your notes and ask questions when something doesn't make sense so we can get it while still fresh in memory and uh, try to keep off, uh, off uh, subject commentary to a minimum. A minimum. Uh, today's table of content is uh, first off, we're doing a theoretical lesson, lesson uh, where we introduce uh, some different terms and uh, then we'll go into armor, do a practical session where we'll make uh, out some mar marching orders uh, to each other, and we'll actually, uh, after we've done that, we'll use the marching orders you made to, to conduct an actual march, march across generous uh, mountain vehicles. Just to get a feel for um, how your orders affect your march. And uh, if we're going to be real, uh, if we get too bored, I'll enact some. Uh, Need for emergency procedures and put some enemies in there. You can shoot at shit like that. Should be fun. Okay. So, any questions so far? Do we have any references that we should be looking at? Yeah, I have the um, slideshow like last time. It's posted in the channel description. Okay, didn't see it. I'll look for it again. Oh, here it is. I must have come in a little late. Am I late? Yeah, well, You're only five minutes late, so... Yeah, we just went there. over the, um, the tape of content, so... Good, in yeah. good time. <laughs> just in time, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, moving on, we're gonna go over... Uh, marching orders, and we're gonna be using an acronym used in the Danish army that I tried to translate into English. Uh, and keep it rememberable. In Danish, it's yeah, in Danish it's called uh, uh, Simonforov. Uh, so I tried to tr translate it into Simifos Rock. I hope you could remember that to keep it in Skyrim reference or some shit like that. Simifos Rock. I'll just call it Smurf. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're gonna miss some points, <laughs> but okay. By saying Simifos uh, Rock, you should be able to get all the letters that way. Yeah. And if you can remember this word and you can remember what each letter means, then you can basically do a marching order like that. It should take less than five minutes to compose a marching order. Okay. Um, the marching order consists of the following points. Starting position, ingress point, marching route, egress point, end position. Formation and order of march, pacing, speed, regu regulations, objectives in route, and common orders. And I'll, of course, get uh, in, into all of these. It's just so. Uh, um, Must be a nine line. Nah, yeah, it's not really like uh, not nothing like a nine line at all. But uh, it's just a list of points you need to consider. Uh, when you do a platoon lead, you don't need to actually. Um, you you will need to mention all of this in, whenever you're doing a marching order. But some of these things can run align uh, align each other. Like uh, starting position, and ingress point can be the same, and egress and end point can be the same. Uh, that's just um, uh, for for bigger operations that you need to put in an ingress point and egress point. Um, yeah, let's go. Uh, let's move on then. The first off, we're gonna go, and we can split split this into two sections. We first off, we have the marching route itself, and then we have additional orders. 
So first off, we're going to talk about the, uh, ma the marching route. And um, in the marching route, first off, of course, we have a starting position, and that's that's what a pl platoon physically is now when you're giving the marching order. That's the way a platoon is. And uh, in real life, there's always a concern about uh, making sure your people know where they are and what they're going. So in real life, you'd put an effort into making a sand table or uh, whatever, so you can show your pe uh, or show on our map, show your people we are here and uh, and so on. Yeah. Uh, is starting position like a OP or BP or depending on where you're moving from? Yeah, it, usually it would be a FARP or a, a ORV uh -huh. or something where you're like covered up and safe and you can uh, spend time. But starting position is just a word we use for where the platoon is physically now while we're briefing. So in the All briefing right. screen, you'd usually identify, okay, we're, we're holed up in the FARP debate on the north side of, uh, of Fallujah, and we're going... Uh, that, that's just your starting point. It's just uh, saying that part, that's the starting point. The next thing is egress, uh, ingress point. And um, if you go ahead and look into Scribbler, you should be able to uh, join me in there. If my fucking Firefox want to work. Shit. Them. Okay. Well, uh, I'll just try and uh, work around that. Anyways, um, uh, ingress points won't be very much necessary in game, but uh, if we're doing um, some sort of larger mission with more multiple platoons or multiple units uh, do, uh, doing stuff, then you want to put in. Uh, what's called an ingress point. And that's basically, um, if you have an MS, uh, an, a big ass MSR that you, uh, that you have uh, several platoons dri uh, driving, up, uh, driving along, then when, you report, uh, then when you're reporting to a company command that you're gonna be mo moving along this road, then he needs your, um, your ingress point. And that's basically where you're starting your march along that route. And then later uh, on, he wants your egress point, so he knows that okay, this is where you're off the route. And if any of you know about Operation Market Garden, then you'd know uh, of that the ten, uh, ten mile uh, traffic jam they had uh, in that operation. You you ever heard of Market Garden? I have. Okay, cool. Yeah. So basically, um, their problem there was that they didn't um, they didn't talk together about where on the route the different units were. So they basically just drove into the route and uh, and started, and that um, just made for a traffic jam. So the reason you want ingress points is so you can say, okay, so we have a company moving on this road from this point to this point at this time. So we, can, we can't really move anyone else in there because they'll just be stuck behind that company. And that's why we want to uh, put that in. Uh, not that applicable to armor, but something to consider, uh, even so. Uh, you need me to draw, uh, try and draw it with the uh, with some sketchy, or do you kind of get the idea? Um, I haven't got a link to Scribbler. You can't go yeah. into Scribbler. So you can like you, you didn't put a link up. The link up for Scribbler. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'll just uh, try and give it again. Check uh, the chat now. Ah, uh, yeah. It's there. Yeah. See. How can there's three versions of you got and this? I'm kind of wondering too. Yes, I'll God. fix that later. Okay, I'll just give all of you guys a uh, drawing power and writing power. Alright. Um, do you want me to try and find a map image and upload it again? I just want to do some. Okay, yeah, fuck, let's just do a map. Just to. We'll just use gamma root again. It's uh, just, it's just concept. It's not, um, it's not because you want to put an ingress point and ingress point to half click apart. It's just to show you guys. So, um, if you will imagine that we're in this compound right here, that's our, that's our platoon starting position. We're putting up 360 security, and we're uh, and we're just getting marching orders. We're gonna do a new objective. Then that's your starting point, and then we're gonna move out on this MSR, and that's a uh, 
that's a battalion march, uh, marching route, so with that, uh, so we need to uh, tell the company command that we're going to be moving on this and when we're going to move. So we're going to put down an IP. We're going to move uh, move from uh, this blue, little blue IP I set up here. That's our ingress point, and that's just so uh, so battalion CEO knows he has units moving on that road uh, at X hour or H hour, depending on. Uh, and H hour is just the minute you, you're stepping off. We can't really enforce that in armor because people just uh, too fucking uh, slow. But in real life, you'd say uh, X hour is uh, 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 zero 0900. And then at zero 0900, you are on the ingress point and you're moving along the MSR. And if you're not, then you need to go through a whole deal about telling the company commander that you're late and shit like that. And you can potentially just delay an entire battalion by fucking that up. Um, that's your ingress point. The next thing you want to do when you're giving your marching orders is um, give out a, mar uh, a marching route. And um, what many commanders can tend to fail at is they just say uh, we need to go there and then they don't define the actual route. So you want to give out the uh, waypoints and those can either be markers on the map, that's pretty easy in armor compared to real life where you have to spend time actually writing shit down. But in armor it's pretty easy, just put down waypoints. You could also use um, uh, use some points ad uh, identified on the map, and you could identify that that's T in the section one, and that is uh, uh, Elizabeth Cross, and that is uh, uh, what uh, whatever name you can f uh, figure out some uh, some sort of name for uh, for things, and um, and do then you get squad leaders doing that, then you have some pretty easy comms uh, in uh, in game, but the most important part is you'd uh, explain the marching route. So if uh, if we pretend this was way bigger than it is, then you'd say we will be marching south along MSR past farm. That's here, and we'll be marching past. Uh, we will be doing a uh, turn one and turn two. That could be uh, uh, you explaining it, and you, then in real life you'd be showing on the map on armor. You just want to mark that this is farm. This is turn one. This is turn two. So people know that and uh, know what you're talking about. You could also just call waypoint one, two, and three, depending on uh, uh, your command type. All right. Okay. So that's um, that's starting position, ingress point, marching route, and then of course we have egress point. And egress point is just like an ingress point. It's the point where we say, from now on we're off the road. You won't see him. Um, we we will leave the road, and that could be uh, the bottom blue uh, blue dot here. That's an uh, egress point, and from there we leave the the marching route. Um, and we if, and from there we move to our end position, and that could be that's usually within a click of the egress point. You wouldn't want to have to move for, uh, further away from the egress point, and you want to move the egress egress point and change your march route. Okay. Um, one more thing, uh, this is a pretty shitty map for this, but in real life, you would always want, uh, and in game for that matter, you would always want to put in an alternate marching route. Um, you, might, you might not want to mark it just because players are stupid, but you want to have a planned alternate marching route. And if we uh, we're making a platoonist dismount in this case, you could, uh, you could make an alternate marching route being uh, moving along here. Coming from this direction, that's uh, and that would be also the marching route. You would call uh, the first uh, march route um, gold, and the second one silver. So you say and can say, uh, say people, okay, if we meet up position uh, before we get to farm, then we'll head back and we'll move along uh, march route silver instead, and then explain what march route silver is all about. And, and, and you, uh, yeah, you're saying that um, players are stupid. So you might not want to mention it in game. Are you saying you have that in your own mind, but you don't? You might not announce it to everybody to keep it simple so that everybody isn't confused. Yeah, that's mainly what I'm going for. Because if you get a, a bunch of players that know their shit and understand the difference between uh, main and alternate marching route and all that shit, then yeah, ex uh, go ahead and explain the alternate marching route because then you won't have to waste time communicating in game. Then you can just say. Move on to marching route silver. Okay, it one it does a major U turn, goes back to silver, and then takes silver. But if people don't understand that, then you can get 
extreme confusion. You can like have, <laughs> I've seen it, seen it so many times in armor. You get like two squads going down uh, the main marching route, and then weapon squad goes uh, goes ahead down the alternate route yeah. right away. So you, you wanna think, you, yeah. You wanna think about it yourself so that you have a good plan yourself, just so you you can you have it right in your back pocket and you can use it just in case you need it. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we have our egress point and our end state. Um, on our ending position, that is uh, that is uh, the end of your march, and that's why you shift from, to another uh, another type of objective. Uh, you could have to um, it, an objective could be prepare for an assault or set up a defensive position near the ending position or whatever. But uh, the end position is just where you stop. Uh, um, stop marching and prepare for some different uh, objective. And whenever you're not doing um, preparing for an assault or defensive positions or whatever, then you are actually on a mar uh, marching. Uh, you won't, don't want to have to to go over an entire marching order every time you you have to move your platoon a little. But you always want to think about it whenever you're uh, planning uh, planning stuff like this. And basically, you would always want to, uh, whenever you tell uh, your platoon to move somewhere, you want to give them, we're starting here, we're going this way, and we're stop, uh, and we're ending up here. Uh, pretty, pretty basic stuff, but something uh, you always want to keep in your mind. Any questions on adding a marching route in itself? Okay, so in the future, whenever we do convoy ups, I'm always going to see you guys. Uh, Having a, a nice, a nice little plan laid out for how we're gonna get the exactly what way we're gonna get to, uh, get to a point, and exactly what way we're gonna divert onto a different road if we don't, uh, if if that doesn't happen. Ah, just kidding with you. <laughs> okay. So that's it for the marching route. This will be pretty quick then. Next thing is is the more. Uh, demanding bit and that's what you need to remember because marching routes in itself is pretty simple but when you need and but the second part is the additional orders and you'd usually want to give um, uh, some extra extra orders on how the march is going to be happening of course first thing you have is formation and order of march and um, one thing is that the um, Usually, you do, uh, you'd want to do some sort of col uh, column formation, or stack column, or even, uh, or if if you have uh, suspect uh, if you sp suspect enemies to uh, to attack you uh, one, uh, while you're moving, then you'd want to set up your formation depending on where you expect them from, obviously. And that's where you brief your platoon. That, uh, for instance, I could say I intend to move in a single file column along the road. Okay. Um, in the order of march here, first squad, second squad, weapon squad, uh, command, and then fourth squad, for instance. But you could also, uh, and then, but um, as you move through the terrain, the terrain changes, and so does your threats. So it could be that you say, okay, once we get on to this point, uh, point farm, I want to change that. So uh, I want you to go into a platoon two up, order of march uh, one, two, weapons three, command. For instance, um, yeah. Uh, so formation or an order of march is pretty simple, but always something you want to mention whenever you, uh, whenever you're doing something. Even if it's pretty obvious to everyone you're going to be driving in a column, then you want to mention that you want them to drive in a single file or walk in a single file, and you want them in this order of march because if you don't uh, tell people what to expect. Then they um, make uh, figure it out on their own, and if you have uh, four squad leaders figuring this out on their own, then you get four different solutions all the time. Um, yeah, that's actually a pretty funny thing. I just um, I just read the survey that, uh, or what's it called? Yeah, so, uh, survey that figured out that um, humans actually um, under stress we actually contradict each other. Just for the hell of it, we if we simply can't work together if we haven't pre-planned uh, how, how to uh, what, what we're gonna do in a certain event. 
so that's why um, military does also always a great focus on um, who's the leader and who's the leader if he dies and who's the leader if he dies and so on because you don't want to get in a situation where people start co contradicting each other just because they want to lead all of them yeah side note okay um moving on when you give it uh, once you give out formation uh, and order of march you want to give out spacing as well and um uh, obviously pretty basic but especially when you're doing a convoy mission or when you're doing a, any a kind of march then depending on terrain you might want to have a, a bigger spacing between squads than you usually have because sometimes we just have spacing between squads 10, 10 meters or less and uh, it's great for um, for um, for combat in a town or something but actually in a, in a wooded environment or in a, in an open field you'd want greater spacing between the squads so uh, so you could easily go, go ahead and say okay I want uh, I want single file column or march one two three four but I want a 50 meter spacing between each squad then uh, and if you don't mention this you're not going to get it so the, and so it's important for you guys to tell your platoon I want a 50 meter spacing and if you don't have a 50 meter spacing then stop and wait for the unit in front of you to get far enough away to have and to get that spacing and then start moving again <laughs> 